Well, I made my decision. A friend of mine happens to be working in my shop here today, and he's learning to build a guitar. And he came over here and he said, hey, did you see this is cracked right here? So he, he lifted up on it and sure enough, this, the whole thing was just really bad. So you can see I've started chiseling it out of here. Literally just taking a chisel, just gonna break all of this wood back to the, back to the outside skin. And I'm gonna break it down flat inside of here, make it just a good flat spot. I'm gonna come back in and, and I may actually have to cut these wings off here off of the top, which I hate to do, but I may have to do that. And then I'm gonna just cut an angled block and slide it in there and glue it in place. And then I'll just recut the whole thing from scratch and I'll make it fit this neck. Once I get the neck cleaned up, it, in one way it's an advantage because I'll be able to make it fit the neck without any shims or anything. And um, it's a lot more work, but on the other hand, it was just splintered and I, I was about ready to piece it back together, but I got to thinking, man, it just, piecing it back together is not gonna work here. Even after he showed me how it was cracked over here, he, he just lifted up on it, he happened to notice that, I didn't notice it. And uh, so I'm glad, he, I'm glad he was here and he noticed that because uh, it's just a mess. And, and the, I just don't think this was a real good piece of spruce uh, that they used in here. It just, there's a knot going right through it right here. You can see a knot in the spruce and you, know, you typically don't use spruce that's got knots in it either. So I just, for whatever reason, that piece of spruce just wasn't that strong. So hopefully I can glue a, a flat plate in there get it completely glued to that spruce and, and that'll make it strong and then I'll recarve it all and I think it'll be really really strong and last a long time that way and uh, overall I think that's the best way to do it. It's a lot lot more work but that's what I so, think needs to be done. We decided to just take it all out and start over. So what I did was I got my Dremel tool out, made myself a bigger router base by with some plexiglass and one that would span, that way it would span this whole opening, if you can see here. And then I have routed the whole bottom of the slot completely flat now, so it's perfectly flat. I also leveled this off on the top here with a file first, just to make sure it was good and flat with a rasp. And then I took the router base and went over there and flattened this whole thing off. Now right now the sides are fairly straight down and uh, I'm deciding on whether I'm going to leave them that way. I kind of think I am, but I'm going to try to straighten them up some more yet. Um, but I can still see cracks through the side wood all the way down through here. I can still see cracks in the bottom piece a little bit where the side had cracked, and that's why they put the screws through it on both sides. So it's a good thing that we just routed it all out because it was in bad shape. And uh, at least this way it'll have a chance of holding. And I think it'll hold permanently but uh, you know you never know on this kind of thing but I'm pretty sure this is going to be a permanent fix just a lot more work okay since the last update it's been about an hour and I've been working on this thing and as you can see I've got a neck block cut here to fit down in here first of all what I did was I took my Dremel tool with this wide base and I routed it completely flat it's absolutely perfectly flat across here then I took a chisel and a straight edge like this and I put the straight edge on this side where I could see that the edge was absolutely straight and I literally took the chisel and just barely skimmed any wood off of here till I got it absolutely flat and straight and I can look down through here and I can see a little tiny bit of daylight in a place or two but it's so minor that I'm talking like a human hair width is what I'm talking and same way on this side and so it's absolutely straight and as, as you can get it by hand. Then I cut a block of wood and this is actually sycamore. Normally it's used, normally you use softwoods on this like spruce, but this has had spruce in here and it's been broke and busted and everything. So I'm doing, I'm going with the hardwood and this is sycamore and it's a pretty stable wood once it's dry. I'm going, and I've been hand fitting this block and I've been working on it by hand and, and using like carbon paper and putting it in here with the carbon paper, letting the carbon paper make a mark on it and then that would be the high spot so I sand that off or chisel it off and basically I've got it fitting, I 
would almost call that airtight. It's pretty darn tight. It's a, it, it goes in there without any extra pressure, so it's not pushing nothing out, but it, it doesn't have any play at all. I mean, it's absolutely, completely snug. And it fits the bottom here perfectly flat. It fits the end here perfectly flat. So it's as good as it gets. And it's also flat across these uh, side edges here. So it's, it's completely flat across here. So the next step is I'm going to glue this in place, let it set for 24 hours, then I will start chiseling this all I'm going to just go ahead and show the glue up on this. I've squeezed a lot of glue down in here and I am going to, got this brush, I'm going to brush it all over every single surface. I don't want any uncovered areas at all. And uh, Try not to put like an excess of glue in here. I'm trying to put enough glue in here that it'll cover it without a ton of squeeze out. I mean, I want squeeze out obviously because I want it to be a tight joint, but I don't want excessive squeeze out because it's just make a big mess. So pretty much got every area covered with glue now. And uh, what I'll do is take the extra glue now, and I've, I have this marked as top, so I know this is the top right here. And I'll begin to glue up this piece of wood too, because I do not want it to get in there and not have glue on all surfaces. So now that's got every single surface covered and we'll squeeze it into there and uh, clamping this is going to be hard. I think what I'm going to do is drill me a couple of screw holes and put some temporary screws right in the middle and I'll take the screws back out of course. But I think that's how I'm going to clamp it. I'm going to tap it down in there as good as I can. Use this wipe off this extra glue here and then I'll uh, that's in there as tight as it's going to go and I will put some screws on there though because I want it to have some squeeze out there uh, I've heard people say you can squeeze too much glue out but that uh, I have never Hammer. run into that situation I've drilled and countersunk holes put screws down in there to hold this good and solid till it dries so that's about it for the next 24 hours on this piece. Thought I'd let you see a little bit of how I clean this neck joint off. It's pretty bad. Let me zoom the camera in a little bit. Maybe you can see what I'm doing. And uh, basically there's some old spruce. This is glue and spruce that's on here. So what I'm going to do is clean this all back down to maple. And I can tell there's two or three different kinds of glue on here, so obviously they didn't clean the glue off whenever they were repairing this neck in the past. It's probably been repaired at least once uh, where it was taken out of the joint, maybe twice, and plus the factory install originally. So I'm sure I'm at least the third one to work on this neck joint, if not the fourth. Uh, on the outside where they did the dowel pin, I could be the fifth if you count that one. But uh, it's been worked on many times. The way I uh, intend for this to be is that this will be the last time. So this has to be carved completely back down to bare wood and perfectly smooth and perfectly straight. And once I get that, then I will make the joint in that new neck block match this exactly. Boy, there's glue everywhere. You can just see it. I don't know if you can just see it scraping off there. It's just coming off in chunks. Just glue everywhere. So all that glue has to come off. So rather than bore you to tears with just cleaning this with that, I will bring you back when we get her clean. Good morning, friends. It's been 24 hours, and uh, we've got the neck pretty clean. I don't have it perfect yet. I'll work on it some more. 
but it's uh, clean enough to use as a measuring device now. Uh, in other words, what I'm going to do is measure the dovetail on this and scribe it over to the uh, neck block that we glued into the body. And uh, the way I did that was I took these calipers first and I slid it all the way down inside this groove so that I'm measuring the narrowest part of the dovetail. I, I, well, it's hard to explain that. It's the narrowest part of the dovetail at the widest end, I guess you'd say. I mean, because the dovetail gets is skinny here and it gets wider as it goes down. But then I'm it's also tapered inward too, so it's it's narrower inside than it is on this outside edge. So it's narrower in here than it is out here. And so I got that precisely set. Then I did the same thing at the top and set that just as tight as I could get it right there at the top. Then I took these calipers, digital calipers, and I measured that precisely in thousands of inches, both of those. And we've got a, uh, I, I measured a center line right straight down the neck first. And I did that with the calipers also. I measured it in thousands of inches up here and down here, and, and then divided it in half, found the center, and drew a center line. Then I took the the numbers that I got off of this, divided in half, and went halfway off of each side on the center line. So that way, so basically what I'm doing is transferring the inside of that dovetail to the top surface here, which is what would line up with that after we put the neck back in. So this is the very narrowest part of the dovetail and the pencil marks I mark on the inside too. So this is actually tighter, slightly tighter than the actual finished dovetail. And the reason for that is you want to sneak up on it. You want to work out to it. You don't want to uh, have your very first cuts be exactly on the mark because you'll end up being having a sloppy joint.